What's good, YouTube? Jay Lee here. Got another Northwest podcast. Let's talk about the effects, the negative and and generally untold effects of modern feminism. Not many people really address this. Not many people really talk about this aside from the red pill community, aside from the men's rights activists. I thought that there was some glimpses into some great content as far as the implications of how men are affected by it. Uh, in the documentary uh, The Red Pill by, um, oh, I just I just had her name, I forget her name. Anyway, I think it starts with a J. Um, anyway, I forget her name, but she, she made a documentary called The Red Pill. It's, it, you know, a female, another great female uh, journalist, or however you want to call it, uh, particularly writer, is um, Esther Villar. She wrote a book called The Manipulated Man. Uh, great book go check it out talks about how women are manipulating men in society based on culture norms gender roles how women kind of uh, leech off of men and particularly you know, in the divorce industry particularly when it comes to like labor how how women uh, <laughs> you know again basically just leech off of men so I had a good conversation um, with somebody about the effects of feminism, particularly with regards to the you know modern rights, and he brought up some interesting points, and I disagree ultimately with his consensus, which is that women shouldn't have rights. I don't agree with that, you know, objectively. I think from an egalitarian standpoint, from a you know basic human rights standpoint, I would never want to deny anyone rights basic rights such as you know the right to do what you want with your body the right to vote the right to work um, the right to choose who you marry uh, which supposedly these things were denied women in the past cultures and things like that um, you know so, so some cultures still to, to this day practice arranged marriages things like that um, much to the dismay of some of the women, although I've heard that arranged marriages actually don't have don't have a high divorce rate. Now that could be because of societal, family, uh, familial, and cultural pressures and stigma. I don't know, but at any rate, I still believe women should have basic rights, such as voting, choosing who to marry, choosing whether or not they want to work. Um, that's never been in my mind anything that's that's questionable I joke about it you know like repeal the 19th amendment haha -ha. but honestly when it comes to objective morality I don't think anyone should be denied those basic rights however we have to come you know come around and look you know with a microscope into the results of that and what has happened and, and there's some there's some gray area there you know like what's the result of that well they've manipulated us they've you know, taking advantage of us through divorce, alimony, things like that. Um, but I also believe that there's social engineering going on. I believe that, you know, modern, particularly second and third wave feminism. So when I say modern feminism, what I mean is second and third wave feminism. To me, classical feminism is first wave feminism, which is just basic human rights, the right to vote, the right to work, the right to choose who you marry, right? The right to be seen as equal in society, which is fine. I'm I'm not a male supremacist. I'm not a misogynist. I don't want to put women down on a basic human level. What I am is I'm somebody who wants accountability in society. I'm somebody who wants genuine equality, genuine fairness. So a lot of the equality movement, quote unquote, that's going on today, what it really is, is um, kind of a schism. I don't know how to say that word. Schism, 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 whatever you know or a, or a, what do they call it a anyway like like something to or a wedge there we go it drives a wedge the, the equality quote unquote equality movement drives a wedge and and opens up kind of a an opportunity a chasm for a whole lot of messed up stuff right oh it's all you know oh you don't think i should be able to do this totally immoral thing you must not like equality right so it's like there's all this um negative stuff that they can hide in this in something that seems very moral and egalitarian such as equality right? Uh, 
right? I, I you know, I do believe people deserve rights and, and we should have equality, but when it comes down to basic equality, you have to look at both sides. Are men getting the same treatment as women? No. Women are preferred, are uplifted, are you know, their behaviors excused, they're, they're, they're privileged, men are not. Men are put down, men are held to, to, to different standards. So really, when you really look at what's actually going on in society, the accountability, or excuse me, the equality movement is not uh, real. It's not actually happening. There's really not equality. Men are actually being put down and women are being uplifted. So. It, you know, it goes back to that saying of like, don't pay attention to what somebody says, pay attention to what they do, because what they do is more truthful and, you know, representative of who they really are as opposed, as opposed to what they say, right? So watch what they, watch their actions, not their words, right? So when feminism comes in, riding on the heels of the schism of quote unquote equality, and yet they're constantly putting men down they're constantly propping up and pumping this propaganda that went uh, excuse me that men are by nature toxic by nature oppressive right this is uh you know basically propaganda this equality stuff right so again Basic equality, I'm a proponent of, right? Genuine equality, I'm a proponent of. What I don't like is the lies, the schism, the propaganda that comes through that schism. Um, so, second wave feminism brought in a lot of negatives. Second wave feminism brought in, you know, it, it removed social stigma for promiscuity. It removed social stigma for divorce. It removed um, accountability for behavior it's you know an era where women learn that oh they can just blame everything on men it's it's a it's an era where they learned how to play the oppression card oh you, you you're just oppressing me i'm a woman therefore i which is crazy if you think about how toxic and twisted that is like on the one hand they scream we want equal rights and then when it comes down to it they fall back on you know i'm a woman don't don't uh uh, oppress me, you know, and they use that card whenever they're in any kind of uh, accountability moment. So they use that to get out of accountability, right? And they've been doing that since the 70s, right? You know, oh, you know, uh, <laughs> I just want a divorce because, you know, I, I don't like this guy anymore. The sex is boring. He doesn't make enough money for me. I met somebody better, right? This is, uh, this is, you know, no fault divorce. This is what second wave feminism brought in of course we know third wave feminism was just the the it really just doubled down on all of the things that they came about in second wave feminism and it totally you know uplifted it as far as um uh made it way more toxic right third wave feminism is is really just straight up man hate um and uh, it really radicalized women even more. Third wave, second wave feminism is, is subtle. Third wave <laughs> is, is very radicalized in, from my viewpoint. It's almost militant, right? Um, so much came in with that, such as, you know, uh, mi you know <laughs> just extreme versions of, you know, of... Uh, you know what second wave feminism brought in the promiscuity went from oh you know a woman just sleeping around to her being like extreme lesbian to her being like you know uh <laughs> you know i don't want to i don't want to get you know say too much there because it's like i gotta be careful what i say on youtube but you guys know what i mean it, it just it just uplifted that you know it, it's one thing for a woman to go sleep around with you know a few men here and there it's another thing for 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 a woman to just go full on you know lesbian or full on like you know porn and, and and all the stuff that they do now it's like oh now we can't question that like we're not supposed to if we question that we're a misogynist like oh yes let's, let's totally normalize you know gang banging or something right it's just insane right so and then of course abortion which is just horrible right so in my opinion Modern feminism, second and third wave feminism is statistically 
and even not statistically, where, where, where we don't have the statistics for it, right, is one of the worst things to ever happen to society. Um, you know, my estimation, you know, in America, since Planned Parenthood, I think it was 1973 when Planned Parenthood came into uh, uh, fruition as a, as a corporate entity, Planned Parenthood is where women go to basically have abortions, uh, I think it was 1973. Since then, according to my estimation, it's around 15 to 20 million abortions. I forget the exact number, but I think it's around 500,000 per year on average, 400 to, like 400 to 600,000 per year in America alone. So that's 20 million, approximately 15 to 20 million abortions, which is more, which is like one fourth of how many people died in World War II, right? So we're, we're talking about World War massive scale casualties, right? Um, casualties in in uh in effect subsequently after planned parenthood was was uh you know um inaugurated or you know since since it started right so wow i mean that's that that that's a lot of casualties that's a lot of babies being killed by women who just feel like they have the right to do that and yes some of them had uh depression I know my mom personally was pregnant and she, and her her mother was trying to pressure her into an abortion and um she couldn't do it because she didn't want to kill a child she just didn't have the heart for it and I know many women kill their children and they feel I, I dated a girl who who had an abortion when she was younger and she felt horrible guilt for many years so like there's that but then if you think about like the flip side, like there's probably a lot of women who don't feel any guilt. And particularly today where it's like you realize just how toxic these women have become when they're fighting, literally ready to go to war physically in the streets with men who, you know, or even even women, you know, pro-choice versus pro-life, which is insane, right? They're, they're fighting tooth and nail for the ability to be able to, to – um, kill their child which is sad embarrassing toxic disgusting shameful like like imagine arguing about you know for the right to kill a baby it's just and yet these same people these same people will turn around and when there's like a massacre like we just had it in texas you know these kids being killed by by a gunman right these same people the same women who who are out here advocating against killing you know for, and in favor of killing their own children will advocate against guns so that children w won't be killed in schools and they act like it's such a tragedy and it's like you don't care about kids you want to kill them it's insane it's insane right um so just just briefly like um uh uh what is the effects right what is the effects of modern feminism so as i say i think it's a top three worst things to happen to humanity i mean you've got plagues you've got world wars you've got slavery right you've got um you know those are the you know off the top, you know i guess natural disasters maybe but that's not even that many casualties like probably the most casualties in history were from world wars and you have fem you have you have abortion which is a big proponent of modern feminism competing with world wars as far as how many number of casualties i mean that's the same right so to me it's a top three thing that's happened um you know in history based on that alone and that's not to factor in like the ramifications of like the death pain suffering that it's caused to families right children being displaced countless marriages ruined I mean, 50% divorce rate, 50 to 60% divorce rate, right? Since the 1970s, since second wave f f feminism, um, women initiate 70 to 85% of divorces on average. Second marriages end in divorce 75% of the time. Uh, college educated women initiate divorce 90% of the time. Okay, so the more education she has, the more likely she's likely to divorce the man right so the more she's indoctrinated with with modern feminist you know propaganda that, that they teach at the universities the more she's likely to 
just be unmarriable. And this is why men are walking away from marriage. I made I just made a video on why why men are why, why modern feminism and why divorce is bad for women because it's men are walking away. Men don't want any part of it. No way. You're not taking my money. No way. I'm not going to get into this marriage with a, with a toxic feminist. And and they most I mean, how many of them are are feminists in today's day and age? Seems like most of them. Uh, not to mention the untold sum of money that's garnished from the business of divorce. Lawyers, you know, making out like bandits. The court system making money hand over fist. Uh, men being basically extorted in, in court from alimony, right? I mean, this is just an insanely insidious ideology that still, I believe, the majority of people out there don't realize how damaging it's been. And that's because male voices in society are marginalized. Male males are told to just suck it up. Oh, don't complain. Don't be emotional. It's not manly, right? Um, men are thrown under the bus in all respects, as far as like, you know, what what happens to us in court. Women, I think, seventy five percent of the time get custody of the children in divorces. Um, men's suffering and pain is untold. It doesn't get uh, publicized. It doesn't get talked about. We're told to suck it up, right? And this is why. And and men uh, disproportionately commit suicide more than more than women. And probably this is one of the main causes. Men are homeless more than women. Also, probably one of the main causes. If a man gets his home taken away through a bad divorce you know he's going to go through suicidal tendencies he's going to go through depression he could lose his career he could he could end up homeless i talked to a guy once who uh was homeless and he told me he said uh you know I, this was in my early 20s but i was just walking around downtown one day and i st struck up a conversation out of the blue with this guy i wanted i just felt like talking to him he was sitting down and i felt he looked sad so i wanted to talk to him you know just kind of maybe see if i could cheer him up and he told me about what happened to him he said well first i lost my job then i lost my house and then my wife left me and took the kids and i'm like wow you know uh Everything is on a man's shoulder. Everything is based on his ability to provide, his ability to be competent in the financial world. Men have to provide. Our worth is based on what we can do for, for women financially, what we can do for a family financially, right? If you take that away, the woman nine times out of 10 is going to leave the man and that says, speaks, that speaks volumes about female nature right so that's just one of the many things what else you know it it uh you know the court system and the divorce uh <laughs> vehicle absolutely ruins lives it absolutely harms children and a lot of it is based on the woman's ego or it's based on her her thinking she deserves better and and this uh modern kind of hyped up uh, progressive mentality that's like, oh, you know, you deserve, you're, you're a queen, you deserve everything out there. And it's like, yeah, I think everybody deserves good things in life. I think people, as human beings, we we should work for and have good things in life. But at what point do you just say, yeah, I'm, I'm thankful for what I have and I'm going to humbly accept what I have and I'm going to work on what I have to make what I have better. I love my husband. I love my wife. I love my children. I love my family. I love my home. I love my life. I'm going to try to keep that going as opposed to being like oh I could do better all the time and this is where you know female nature comes in of hypergamy right so that's one of the, that's one of the major things is that it caused all this divorce what else it, it removes accountability and social stigma for loose promiscuity how many men are hurt because of a promiscuous girlfriend that cheated on him how many men how many divorces happened because of because of women cheating. They say it's 50-50. To my studies, it's 50-50. I believe it's higher than that. I believe women get away with cheating more than men because women have more access to sex than men do. So anytime a woman wants it, she can get it whether she's married or not, period, the end. Men, it's not the same way. The average man cannot get sex, whereas the average woman can get sex. There's a big difference there, which is why I believe 
even though the statistics say it's 50-50, men you know between men and women cheating i believe it's higher i believe women cheat more than men i believe they get away with it more and i also believe they don't admit it as readily and i think that it's not it's not as equal but that's just one of the things promiscuity does promiscuity also there's stds involved um unwanted pregnancies abortions i think it's 75 percent of abortions are because not because she was raped not because she got sick and had to abort but because she just didn't want the child. If you, I think that's even on Planned Parenthood's, it's either the CDC, Center for Disease Control, or Planned Parenthood's website, 75% of, of, of abortions are simply because the woman is not ready or she just doesn't want the child, right? So most abortions are from promiscuity, and you know some of them are, you know, or, or many of them are married couples who are, who are just not ready for a child, However, at its core, I believe abortion is immoral, and I'm glad certain states are coming forward and making laws against it. So that's promiscuity. Um, also, what, 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 you know, what else does promiscuity do? It ruins, it tarnishes the sanctity of marriage. It tarnishes the, the prospects and concept of morality in general. It tarnishes um, the the uh, purity behind a man and a woman getting together because when she's got a whole bunch of partners and most men don't women i believe far and away have have a higher lay count or body count or whatever you want to call it they have more sex partners than men do far and away more probably at least three or four times more than the average the average woman has at least three or four times more sexual partners before she gets into a long-term serious relationship lifelong relationship than men do i fully believe that so it tarnishes the purity that's supposed to be that's supposed to happen in a relationship or a marriage right this is what promiscuity does and bottom line the truth is frankly men do not want to get into relationships with women who've had a who have had a high partner count most men, a lot of these leftist, white knight, weak beta men are fine with that because they have no standards or morals really themselves anyways. And they believe that, oh, you know, this is my in, you know, oh, these guys don't want to uh, love and marry this woman who's got a high body count. I'll do it because it gives them a, it gives them an in, it gives them a way in to uh, beat out other guys because they're already lacking in the masculinity department. They're usually short guys, usually guys who lean left and are like, oh, socialist, commie type guys. They're weak beta white knights who physically can't compete or, or can't compete on some other level, right? So promiscuity is really bad, man. It's, uh, it, and really, I think promiscuity is one of the most damaging things to our society today. It's really, really hurting people. It, 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 uh, it messes with people's mental health. I believe a lot of these women out here who are sleeping with a lot of guys are damaged mentally. I believe that they um, don't have, uh, or I think at, you know, after a certain point, they start to lose the ability to pair bond. They start to lose the ability to have normal, natural emotions because when a woman has sex with a man her emotions are a lot of her emotions are involved in that so a woman who can jump from guy to guy without feeling very emotional she's damaged and she's toxic she's jaded she's messed up right so i believe that it damages that which it which in turn for the rest of her life is going to damage some some or all aspects of her life whether it's family children her ability to be a good parent i mean how is a woman going to teach her children morals and accountability when she has no morals or accountability, right? How's that? So, so why would a man want to marry a woman who has who's been very promiscuous? It's not a good investment for a man. It's not a quality, good uh, idea for a man to settle down with a woman who's been with a lot of partners, right? And in turn, that causes divorce, which is a huge, huge problem with modern feminism, right? Divorce, which is uh, again, as I said before. 50 to 60 percent of all marriages end in divorce 75 percent of second marriages end in divorce 80 to 90 percent of third marriages end in divorce so that it just goes up the more times you're divorced and um also women initiate 70 uh i believe 70 to 85 percent from my study 70 to 85 percent of marriages uh are initiated by excuse me are of, of divorces are initiated by women and 90 percent of divorces uh, in higher educated 
women, 90% of divorces are initiated by hedge, higher educated women, right? So the higher, higher educated she is, the more likely she is to get divorced, which doesn't you know, lend any incentive for a man to marry a woman who's highly educated, although you would think it would be good because yeah, she's smarter, she's, uh, you know, she's more adept, uh, intelligent wise, right? You would, you would probably, it pro you would think it would be better. I'm, I'm attracted to smart girls. However, there you go. That's a statistic. The higher she is that she's ed educated, the, the, the more she's likely to, to divorce you, which probably lead, you know, leads the idea that because she's educated, she thinks she's in control of the relationship or th she thinks she's just as good as a man so she can boss a man around or something. And I've seen that a lot uh, in my experience, right? So what else about feminism? Um, it demonizes men, which is just tragic. Despicable, tragic, drastic. It demonizes masculinity at its core, right? It demonizes masculine nature it demonizes the, the 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 male essence which is to provide and protect for a woman and a family right it calls that under it calls that into question particularly in the family unit right the, the quote unquote patriarchy right you know essentially male leadership in any capacity women are at war with it or, or I should say modern feminists are at war with it right this is this is tragic this is epically tragic right because our whole society is because of male leadership. Peace in society is because of male leadership, right? Men did that. That that wasn't like oh women came along and were like oh you need to stop wars and no 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 men did that. I would argue that the industrial revolution played a major role in that. The industrial revolution really just flipped the course of human civilization and humans in general. It it totally flipped it on its head and like oh you know what we can have peace now because things got better because of of, of uh the industrial revolution so so really you anybody listening would do well to go and study how how monumental the effects of the industrial revolution are which really i would argue before that male leadership it wasn't even a question it had to happen because there's no way a woman can fight off wolves and bears and Indian attacks, right? It just, you can't, you need a man, right? You, you need a man for physical protection and providership. Now we have police, now we have the government, now we have military to protect us from, from imminent physical danger, right? Uh, and of course, guns have improved so we can fend off lion attacks or whatever. I mean, that doesn't happen anymore, but you know what I mean? Like, before the Industrial Revolution, it was literally frontier life where you had to battle Indians and kill bears. And so it's like, there was no question that, it wasn't even a question, men had to be leaders. Okay. So, um, yeah, it just demonizes masculinity at its core, which is despicably insidious, right? Just despicable that we protected you. We built this wonderful free society with this, with this great uh, constitution, great legislation that men, men did that. There wasn't no women signing the Declaration of Independence. It was men. Sorry. And, and I'm not saying women didn't help in their own way. I'm not saying women can't do anything as far as... This. No, women worked. Women helped. Women played a, a, a crucial role. I mean, men and women are needed, period. But Women didn't do the major things, sorry. And and so to attack masculinity, to call the patriarchy oppressive and evil is just insidious. It's it, That is evil in and of itself. It's like killing your, it's like killing God or something. Like God created you. Like you're here because of God and you want to kill God. It's just, it's the ultimate backstab, right? And this is what second and third wave feminism did, is it demonized male nature based on myth, based on skewed statistics, which literally I can prove that rape statistics have been skewed and, and, and tampered with on a statistical level from the CDC. Um, I can get into that, how, how, how someone working at the CDC literally tampered with or, or changed the definition of the word rape when it comes to men. So it looks like men rape women 
disproportionately more than women rape men when it's actually about e about even. Uh, women do rape men, <laughs> but if they change the definition of the word of rape to um, what did they change it to? Uh, something like forced intimacy or something. So because they changed the definition of the word and it was a feminist, it was a female feminist of a certain ethnic descent, if you know what I'm talking about. Anyway, um, she changed the definition of the word uh, from rape to like forced consent or something when, she, when it comes to males. And because they did that, it, it skewed the, the 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 statistics, so it looks like women are disproportionately raped more than more than men are, and it's not true. It's about it's about even, and actually, it's I think women might rape men more than men rape women, but it's so so it used some messed up skewed statistics. Which, by the way, the average woman I believe I did I studied this. The average woman has I think like it's a zero point five percent chance of being raped in her lifetime. I'm not saying it doesn't happen. I'm not saying there's not a you know, when it comes to, you know, the physicality between a man and a woman, men are more physical than women. And so it's harder for a woman to defend herself from an attack, from, from a male attacker. I believe that. But again, from my statistics, I believe it's 0.5% uh, chance of being raped, the average woman, right? So that's, that's not cause for alarm and to demonize an entire gender so to me that's social engineering to me it's like somebody has a vested interest in dethroning male leadership in attacking men in general um, whether it's women as a whole or some entity behind these, these these propagandized movements i don't know right so uh let's see what else blame shifting right Blame shifting. Modern feminism blame shifts problems that women are going through onto men, right? It it removes accountability and blames men. So it's not my fault that I did that 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 this happened. It's men's fault. And women will constantly do this. This is one of the number one tactics they use to get out of accountability, to get out of any kind of blame or get out of any kind of responsibility, they constantly blame shift onto men. And it's something I believe for some reason, from my experience, a lot of it is really ingrained in their nature to be to to default back to this, oh men, it's men's fault I'm like this, right? It's society's fault I'm like this. It's the patriarchy's fault I'm like this. And you'll see this a lot with modern porn stars who, after they get rich, denounce their past life of being a video vixen video harlot whatever you want to call it they'll 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 denounce that life and be like oh the reason i did it is because of men i think it was brie olsen mia khalifa now recently lana rhodes is doing the same thing and the only reason we even know who these women are they have no talent aside from being attractive and sexual right and doing things on camera right um they've come out and denounced and said oh it's men's fault it's society's fault that's the reason why i uh did porn right so this is that's a good example of blame shifting, but so many scenarios and examples of of where women blame shift and and literally point the finger at men for things that they themselves have done on their own volition, on their own choice, right? So it blame shifts pretty much all, almost all of of women's problems onto onto men, and it assumes that men are the cause and not themselves, right? It assume you know it, it it's just an easy out, it, you know it's a default. It's like Oh, you know, I'm a woman. Don't blame me. It's men's fault. And, and 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 this is where female privilege comes in. It's like you've always got that avenue to manipulate out of uh, responsibility. We call this the pussy pass as well. Like particularly when it comes to like jail terms, and 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 you'll see a lot of these te these female teachers getting out of jail sentences that men would be in jail for like five or ten years for statutory rape of one of their students, whereas a woman she gets like six months probation or something for statutory, it's insane, right? And, and it is rape, like call it what it is, right? Statutory rape, right? So they don't even call it that. They call it, uh, they, they don't even call it rape. They don't even call it statutory rape and then, you know, in the headlines, they call it something else, right? So that's just an example of, you know, the pussy pass or female privilege, right? So, um, so where I draw the line, right? Okay, so the other thing is, I believe that at its core, uh, you know, feminism teaches women to be in competition with men. It removes due process, right? 
in, you know, for court cases, men are automatically thrown under the bus with the whole Me Too movement, believe all women, quote unquote, right? It removes due process. Men are acute. Men accused uh, by, by women have been murdered. They've been lynched. They, they, you know, this is, you know, this is history. It happens in India even to this day. It happened. You know, it, it can still happen. Um, when you automatically believe a woman, it's dangerous, right? And it's like, oh, just because she's a woman, she's telling the truth. I mean, that's crazy, right? So women obviously take advantage of this. They manipulate the system uh, to hurt men. Uh, we, we we see a great example with Amber Heard, you know how she tried how she tried to ruin Johnny Depp out of spite or out of hatred. Who knows? You know I believe she she married him and just used him uh, for the money, and she could have walked away with eight million, but she had to slander his name, didn't she? She could have just walked away with a divorce settlement for eight million. Instead, she went to the she went to the press and the papers and told a bunch of lies and said that Johnny raped her and abused her. And she she just lost a court case I think about a week ago, and now she has to pay 15 million. And I hope Johnny makes her pay for that because women need to be held accountable for their actions. These, these lies, right? You can't get out of it, and that's horror. I don't know who who's someone saying that I don't know who started this, but someone saying now that he might not, uh, you know make her pay for that settlement and that's I hope that's not true I hope it's some rumor started by some bitter feminist because these women need to be held accountable and that needs to be on the highest level she needs to pay for what she did to him she ruined his name she needs to pay for that so um, but we see this we see this slander we see this uh, this due process being thrown under the bus based on hearsay based on accusations that are that are unsubstantiated and it ruins men's lives men are fired from their careers men are excommunicated from communities men lose their lives they lose their children they they lose respect in their community based off of hearsay based off of rumors that women start and it's sick you know um so Accusations is another thing that came, and I believe that's a more radicalized thing with third wave feminism. I don't really believe that started in second wave. I think it really came about in third wave feminism, right? And then obviously we see in the third wave femi uh, third wave feminism is just the the absolute push of the gender superiority effect, right? Women are never wrong. Women are this, you know. It, we we see this a lot in in third wave radical feminism. It's really just a gender superiority cult in effect. Right, um, I believe third wave feminism taught women how to manipulate, abuse, and misuse the court system. How to manipulate, abuse, and misuse uh, relationships. How to gaslight men. I believe a lot of this stuff happened in third wave feminism. I believe second wave feminism, for as bad as it was, it was still somewhat, uh, you know, immature. It was so sophomoric women weren't as bad third wave feminism the, the the militant radicalized version of it which came about in the 90s and the 2000s really taught them how to manipulate gaslight and abuse men and not 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 only in the court system just socially in general women are really just have carte blanche to do whatever they want act however they want in society and get and, and manipulate and get whatever they want and we see for instance, like these OnlyFans girls, right? These Belle Delphine or uh, the Cash Me Outside girl, forget her name. She made like $50 million last year off her OnlyFans. Belle Delphine reportedly gets like $1.2 million a month from her OnlyFans. So this is a way that women are manipulating men and they don't have any respect for men. They believe, oh, you know, these men are all simps and they want to give me money and I'm just, I'm a queen, I'm a diva, I'm a goddess and I, I deserve it, right? So this is a manipulation, right? Make no mistake, that's manipulation. That's female privilege and, and the irony and the absolute audacity, the, the arrogance to be that privileged and yet at simultaneously at the same time turn around and say I'm somehow oppressed by men is just flabbergasting like it's just uncanny like what what you you are you are uh, the most privileged class of people in the history of the world you get everything handed to you you literally virtually have zero accountability zero stress zero things to worry about you can literally live for free off of a man 
people you don't even know, never talked to, never met in real life are giving you money and you still somehow believe you are oppressed. That is absolutely mind-blowing and insane. I mean, it's just pure insanity. Uncut, undistilled insanity, right? So, let's see. Um, what's the real effect of this? It's absolutely undermining the fabric of society. It's undermining the fabric of humanity, which is at its core, the family unit. The family unit is more important than anything else really in society in human history because the family unit is what continues the human race on into the next generation. The family unit, a strong, positive, quality, healthy family unit is what makes a good society, is what makes humanity worth living. When you have a chaotic family unit, it ruins everything. Bad children grow up to be bad adults, right? W what makes a bad child? Bad parenting, bad family environment, right? Feminism attacks, it aggressively attacks the family unit. And it's, it's, it's subtle and it's, uh, you know, it seems, it, 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 this is why I always say feminist is one of the most insidious things ever because it presents itself as if it's some great thing. And, and I, again, modern feminism, second and third wave feminism or feminism in effect, right? It presents itself as if it's this egalitarian, you know, good thing that, that revolves around equality when in reality it's undermining the fabric of interpersonal relationships between men and women. It's undermining the fabric of marriages and family unit health in general, right? And, um, you know, it's, it, there's just no words for it. It's just so terrible um on 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 just about every level right not even just in marriage on every level it it it, it kind of in a way just really ruins women and 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 in effect men are suffering because men need women for love and for partnership and to to for, for help the bible says that god created a, you know a woman to be a help meet for a man meaning she's helping the man in life and i believe that it's not good for you know, God himself said it's not good for for man to be alone. Read the book of Genesis, the first couple chapters, before he took Eve and created the woman from the man's rib, right? He said it's not good for man to be alone. He needs a helper right there in Genesis. And I believe that's true. I believe that men get lonely and we need love and we need physicality. And we need to to you know someone to help us in life. And we need someone to go through this life with and yet you don't have that anymore it seems and, and um, at least it's been tarnished to a great degree and by the time a man finds a woman she's not really quality and he has to play therapist he has to play helper and healer to her when really she should be helper and healer to him a woman is a man is, is, is a compliment to a man a woman should compliment a man's life and vice versa and how can that happen when men are in competition with women or, or excuse me when women are in competition with men and how can that happen when masculinity itself is being demonized and attacked right it can't so what does that do it undermines the fabric of society which is the family unit the family life right it it uh, destroys that and it attacks it. It destabilizes it at the very least, right? Most men are afraid to get into marriages. Most men are afraid of divorce. I think it was the great Aries Spears who has a great stand-up uh, special where he talks about this. He says men are not afraid of commitment. And this is where women get it twisted. You know, women are always like, oh, you know, men don't ever want to commit. We're not afraid of commitment. We're afraid of divorce. And Aries Spears said that, and I respect that. And we're also afraid of getting screwed over in a court system. We're afraid of false allegations. We're afraid the woman is going to be a pompous, arrogant diva. We don't. There's there's nothing attractive about being a diva. I grew up in the '90s when um, you know Jennifer Lopez and Britney Spears and and all the rest of these stars, you know. Mariah Carey, Madonna were coming out and they were calling themselves divas as if that was some kind of positive thing. There is nothing positive about being a narcissistic, arrogant, black hole of a, of a human being. That's what a diva is, right? And so all these women 
have taken that concept and internalized it and act like, oh, I deserve the best. I'm a bad bee. I'm a diva. I'm this and that. And, you know, I'm a bad bitch or whatever. You know, it's just like, no, you are you are a toxic black hole you're a mess and you're gonna you're a liability to any man who gets into a relationship with you it's not that men don't want commitment it's that men do not want to commit to the wrong woman and there's not very many quality women out here it's even in the bible even solomon king solomon who who knew because he had like i don't know 15 i forget how many 1500 we'll say uh concubines right um he knew female nature solomon he said I think it's in Ecclesiastes. He said, of a thousand men, I can only find one good man. Out of 10,000 or 100,000 women, I can't find one good one or something like that. And he, he said, you know, it, it's hard out here for a man to find a, find a quality woman. He said that. He said, it's not easy. And so what, what that tells you is that tells you that there's not that many quality women out here. You know, how many women really know how to love a man? How many women really know how to support a man? How many women really know how to, you know, make a man feel good and help a man and, and be submissive to a man? I'm not, you know, I have some leeway on that last one because I, you know, if you want equality, fine. But, you know, I believe female nature wants to, to wants a man to take the lead. I've always believed that, right? So, whatever though, you know, it's... Men are walking away. Men don't want any, as we should, as they should. Men need to wake up and say, "Hey, no, I'm not accepting this. These used goods. I'm not accepting this toxic woman. I'm not. I'm not going to lower myself to that. I'd rather be single. I'm going to learn how to be happy being single. I'm going to learn how to adjust my life and live normally, being single because I'm not going to settle for something less than I deserve, which is a quality woman, which is a quality life, which is a quality love, a quality lover, right?" It's not about happy wife, happy life. It's about happy marriage, happy life. You both should be happy. And it's not about making, it's not about pleasing her. That's whoever said that is insidious. Whoever said, oh, happy wife, happy life is really insidious because it's not about that. It's not about her happiness. It's about the um, consistency of the marriage itself. You both should be happy. You both should want to please each other mutually, right? So, this is why, women, you know, because of sayings like that, happy wife, happy life, you have women out here who think, oh, I'm the prize. I'm the prize. I'm the best. And, you know, all the men want to sleep with me. They're all trying to impress me. I'm not pursuing any man. I don't have to even try. I must be a goddess. I must be uplifted. When in reality, it's like you don't see how how you're being how you're being uh baited into a bad life how how you're how you how important you are in the family unit how important you are as a mother to your children a quality mother and all that goes out the window when you know you uplift yourself that way because now you're arrogant now now you're a diva and you've you've uh you've reached this goddess status where oh yeah you don't need a man and you don't need uh this that and the third and in reality what happens uh you you now you're not going to be a good mother now you're now you're going to be damaged goods to any man who comes across you later in life when you're ready to settle down and that's you don't want to, you don't want to be in that scenario oh i'm 35 and i've got to settle for this woman who has 15 20 years of sleeping around and damage and toxicity now i got to go to therapy with her now i got to do this that and jump through these hoops to even have normality with this person no like life is hard enough already right it's hard enough having a career. It's hard enough paying bills. It's hard enough just getting through your everyday life. You don't need the liability of a toxic woman. This is why men are going their own way. This is why men are saying, "Nope, I'm out of here. Nope, I'm not. I'm not doing." And, and as we should, as you should, you need to have standards as a man. So I believe that covers what I wanted to talk about as far as feminism goes the conversation i had with that guy earlier he was saying how he believes that what they've done with it really shows like who they are in in reality and i and i tend to agree with that however i would never deny anyone basic rights and the right to vote or the right to choose or the right to uh you know work things like that i would never deny anyone those rights um so i agree with first wave feminism conceptually but what women have done with it and where they've gone and how they've hurt men and backstabbed us from that initial 
freedom, if, if you want to call it freedom, whatever you want to call it, that initial legislation, what they've done with it is really sad and, and it's, it's really despicable in, in, you know, in the sense that they've demonized masculinity, right? So it's sad that that happened. It's sad, you know, where we've where we've gone to. But I believe education and, and learning the red pill is a good step for men in general to overcome, you know, any uh, any 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 ignorance or any gray areas where you might be ignorant of what's really going on. And you and and I think educating men, in turn, hopefully should affect. Uh, you know, the more educated a man is about female nature and about what he should, and, you know, the standards that he should have. Hopefully, the higher quality women will will be the ones who get chosen, and the lower quality women will be the ones who, you know, are just left out as they should, because that sh that's what it should be. And and men need to stop sexualizing women to the point where they overlook red flags to the point where they accept baggage to the point where they're so desperate and such in and in, in, in such a scarcity mindset that they just accept low value women right i hope that men would you know i hope that red pill education would bring men out of that precarious position anyway it's been jay lee appreciate you listening it's been northwest podcast peace